Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,208. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, 1,206 to 1,209 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to see how to go from four separate columns into a single pivot table to count the error rate of no error or yes error for four different years and then calculate the proportion of errors and not errors for each one of the years. Now, the problem with this setup here is that if I control down arrow, this one column has yeses and nos down to 344. This one, control down arrow, is down to 383. And if I control home, each one of these columns have a different number of records. Now, we can see from the answer the sample size for each one of these samples of error rates is totally different. So how do we go from this into a pivot table? Now, I could use Power Query. I could convert these to tables and then use Power Query. But if we're doing this a single time, I don't want to go through all the steps of doing Power Query. So I want to go over to the sheet 1208 and do it manually. No problem. If it's a one-time deal, it's easy to roll these three up, all the yeses and nos into a single column, and then have the year as a separate column. Then once we have our two columns with our records, a pivot table is easy. Now I'm going to click in the top cell and use Control Shift Down Arrow to highlight all the way down. And I need to copy this and paste it. Now watch this. I'm going to Control CC and Control C copies it. Control CC opens up the clipboard. Now if you don't have your options for clipboard um, set to Control CC to copy and open up the clipboard, that won't work. And if you need to open it up the clipboard and change that option, you have to go to Home and then click on this as a clipboard. But no way. I have my first column, and that's 2011. Now I'm going to Control Home to get back to the top. Click in the top, Control Shift Down Arrow, Control C. Now I'm going to click in this column, Control Up Arrow to jump up. I need to down arrow to jump to the first record, Control Shift Down Arrow to highlight all the way down, Control C. 11, 12, and 13, I still have one more column, Control Up Arrow, Down Arrow, Control Shift Down Arrow, Control C. Now it's very important that I know the order in which I did this. The top one is this last column, Control Up Arrow, 2014, so that's 14, 13, 12 and 11. Now I can simply come over here and the, the answer just means the error rate, yes or no. I'm going to very carefully click on the first one. Boom. Then I'm going to type 2014, Control Enter, and double click and send it down. Control Down Arrow, double clicking sends it all the way down to the very last record, copying it. Now I click in the first cell below our yeses and nos and get 2013. Boom. I click and there we go. Now I type 2013, Control Enter, double click and send it down. Control Down Arrow, click, click, and there goes the data. 2012, Control Enter, double click and send it down. Control Down Arrow, click. Now I click on the 2011, boom. 2011, Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Now I'm going to control up arrow, control asterisk on the number pad because I like to have black borders around everything. Boom. Now I have my table, two columns or two fields, one for year, one for answer. Now it's easy to do a cross tabulated frequency table and then percent of grand total or percent of column. Click in a single cell in our data set. There's empty cells all the way around. That's very important if you can do a pivot table. Insert pivot table, or I can use the keyboard Alt-N-V. And I'm going to send this to this existing sheet, and I think L1. So it says L1 when I click OK. There is my emerging pivot table. I want to drag the answer, yes and no, down to rows. That field is down there. Instantly, I get a unique list of all the items, yes and no. Now I drag my year. Instantly, I get a unique list for my column headers, the years. 
Now I'm going to drag the answer down to the values. And instantly, I get a cross-tabulated table with a count. This is an AND criteria calculation. I counted all the records in this data set that had no AND the year 2011. Now I don't like these column labels and row labels, so I'm going to go up to Design, Report Layout, Show in Tabular. Escape to close that ribbon tab, my field names, year, and answer. Now I'm going to say replace this. I don't like that field name. I'm just going to type error. And up here in L1, I'm going to type count of errors. I could have actually just <laughs> changed that right up here in the field name when I started. All right, so now I have my frequency distribution. This is a cross tab, 43 yeses in the year 2012. I need to copy this, and I can use my cursor. Or I can click in a single cell and use Control Asterisk on the number pad, Control C. And then right below, I'm going to Control V. Now I want each one of these counts, yes and no, as a percentage of the column total so I can figure out the proportion of no, there were not errors, or yes, there were errors for this error rate. So I right click any cell inside the values area, go down to show values as, and I want percent of column total. And instantly I get my error rates. No, yes, no, yes, no, yes. Now that's pretty amazing. Doing it manually, we went from our three separate columns, consolidated into one table. That made these calculations much easier. That's the main point of this video. But I actually want to show you something a little bit more here. Now, I actually just pasted some stuff here. And back in Excel 2003, into statistical analysis 72, I did a chi-square for to test two or more population proportions. And in that video, we did a chi-square test. But in that video, I actually did all of these calculations plus these calculations I'm going to do here from the four separate columns. And it was just much harder. It would have been much easier to do exactly what we did manually, take these four columns, consolidate them into one data set, and then boom, it's easy to get our proportions and our observed frequencies that we're going to need. Now, this is all statistics. So the point of the video was just to wrap this up into a single column and make our pivot table. But if you're interested in the statistics, here we go. We need to calculate our, from our observed frequencies, we need to calculate our expected frequencies. Now, this is the formula for expected frequency. You have to take whatever the row total is to divide it by the sum of all the sample size. Each one of these is the sample size. So we take the row total divided by the total sample size. That gives us the proportion of no's and yes that we would get if they were all equal. And then we multiply it by the column total. So that gives us our expected frequencies that we then get to compare directly to our observed frequencies. This will involve mixed cell references. So you ready? Equals. And I need, for this whole row, I need the row total. So I'm going to lock it using the F4 key one, two, three times. I lock the column, but not the row. And I divide it by the grand overall total or the sum of the individual sample sizes. And I need to hit F4 to lock that in all directions. This whole row will get 1139 divided by 1307. But when the formula copies down, notice the 3 is not locked, so it'll change to 4, which means it will get the 168 divided by 1307. Now, this part right here is only the first part. We haven't gotten to that part. But watch this. I'm going to Control Enter to populate this all the way through. And we could see that would be the proportion. And for the yeses, it would be 12.8% for each one of these if they were all equal. Now we need to take those proportions for each row and multiply it by the actual column totals. Now, the whole range is highlighted in the active cell. I'm going to hit F2. I'm simply going to multiply it by the column total. Now here, when I copy down, I need it locked there. But when I move to the side, I need it to move to the next sample size or column total. So I'm going to hit F4 one, two times to lock the row, but not the column. Now when I Control Enter to populate this edited formula, Control Enter, there are my expected frequencies. Now once we get this data set and do our cross-tabulated frequency count and calculate this, 
all we have to do is calculate p-value and compare it to the risk we're willing to take of making a mistake, the risk of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true. So it's 5%. If we calculate our p-value and it's bigger than this, then we can conclude that there's no significant difference between the 11.37, 16, 14, and 10. All right, so you ready? We're using the chi sq for square dot, and we're going to use the test. And all it needs to calculate p-value is the actual range, which are our, our observed frequencies, comma, and our expected range. And we can calculate. So I, I didn't mention I had this up here, but we would check all of these. These have to be greater than 5 and before we can get to this step. But here's the drum roll, Control-Enter much bigger. p-value is much bigger than our assumed risk. So we can conclude that there's not a significant difference between our error rates from our four samples. All right, so in this video, we had a little bit of extra stats at the end for chi-square test, checking whether more than two population proportions are equal. And the main point of the video was that amazing manual trick of taking four data sets, combining them into a single one, and then being able to create a pivot table. All right, we'll see you next video.